All right, well, as you guys got to see, I kind of just messed up on that uh, turkey spot, or turkey uh, little scenario, I should say. But uh, we found a bunch of mushrooms over there, or I found a bunch of mushrooms over there. Uh, I ran back and I grabbed this plastic bag, or this paper bag, excuse me. Um, I don't have any, you know, like bags for mushroom hunting or anything, but we're gonna go pick some mushrooms. So we're gonna enjoy today. Um, it's beautiful out, as you guys can kind of see. We're out in the middle of a field. So we'll catch up with you guys when we start picking mushrooms, and I'll give you guys a couple tips along the way. So stay tuned. I just want to give you guys a quick tip. If you guys are mushroom hunting, um, one thing that I think is really good to uh, kind of stay near or kind of keep as a key um, landscape feature, I guess is the best way to put it, is stay near water. Um, you know, the ambient air temperature is going to stay cooler longer, um, but as, as it heats up, um, that, that water is going to keep that ground moist. Um, and I'll show you guys kind of the moisture we're looking for here. We don't want it to be like mud, but we don't want it to be like, you know, bone dry. So once we get up to those mushrooms, um, I'll show you guys what we're looking at. So we've made it up here to the uh, first spot where I found mushrooms. I'm standing over one and I'll show you guys in a second. But uh, we're next to my second tip, I guess would be the best way to put it. Uh, a slippery elm tree is what that tree is that you guys can kind of see right there. Um, if you look next to it, look at that beautiful yellow morel mushroom. When you guys are picking your mushrooms, I think it's also pretty important. Um, you know, some people cut them, some people, you know, just uh, rip them off. I always grab right at the stem and just break it off just like that. Now, if you guys look, you guys can see I left the base of that mushroom in the ground there. There's the base of it right there. Another thing that I want to note is uh, when you find a mushroom or one morel around a tree that's in really good habitat, and I'll go through some more key features that I want to talk about, but. Uh, slow down because most of the time there's going to be one or, or more um, with that one mushroom that you just found and this is a perfect example we just picked that one right you know two feet behind me and if you look we have two more right here Look at that big boy right there. Absolutely beautiful. All right, well, this is a perfect example of check a tree multiple times. Um, the, the mushrooms you guys just saw me pick, um, I picked those mushrooms and I walked probably about another 300 yards and uh, I left my bag over here and as I was coming to pick up my bag, I found another one down there that we're gonna go pick. As I was picking up my bag, look at this beautiful boy. Absolutely beautiful. So, that's another mushroom. We're gonna go ahead and harvest this big bad boy. Come in here, grab right at the stem. Pinch, twist. Oh, he kinda flew off. That's a little aggressive, but. There he is. All right, so there is a mushroom currently on screen. Um, they're kinda hard to find sometimes. They kinda blend in, and I've made it a little bit easier, but I just wanna sh show you guys how well they blend in. Um, if you look at this one right here, um, it's right in the middle of the camera frame, and I'll zoom in. Beautiful, big, yellow mushroom. Uh, that is the chicken of the earth, the lobster of the earth. That is earth's gold, as I like to refer it to. Fried freedom, whatever you guys want to call it. But uh, we're finding mushrooms, and that's pretty exciting. I'm super excited. Uh, season's kind of been weird. Uh, Mother Nature doesn't really know what it wants to do with us uh, yet. Um, one day it's 80 degrees and we're in uh, shorts and a t-shirt and the other day she wants us to be in a heavy coat with pants on so it's all up in the air but we're having fun anyway and we're finding a few mushrooms here and there hopefully season you know really starts to pick up and I can give you guys another video I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one and go ahead and kind of uncover the stem and we're gonna pinch and twist and there we go there is a beautiful morel mushroom absolutely beautiful beautiful golden another couple tips I want to say is uh, be mindful that uh, morels can grow and typically like to grow around dead and dying trees so if you find lay down logs or 
dead or dying trees that are still standing. Uh, take a look around those. If there's a uh, green grass, um, that's really good. Uh, make sure you have good ground moisture and everything. But uh, another tree I want to mention is an elm. Uh, elm's a really good uh, popular tree that most mushroom hunters are very easily uh, able to identify. Um, and they like to hunt around them because they uh, have a lot of mushrooms that typically grow around them. I'm not saying that you can't find them anywhere else, but if I'm going to find and focus on one tree, it's going to be an elm. So I'll find one for you guys here in a second and uh, we'll go, go ahead and go from there. So there's actually two types of morel mushrooms. Um, there's actually a gray slash brown, depending on where you're from. Um, they're referred to differently. Um, and then there's yellow. And the gray slash the browns are actually going to tr um, transform or grow into yellows. Um, and the mushroom that we have here is actually a gray. Um, and uh, it eventually will have become a yellow, but I'm gonna pick it because it's a pretty good size gray. So here's what it looks like. Beautiful mushroom. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this bad boy. So I hadn't walked too far um, from finding that little gray one and I found a monster yellow about, I don't know, five, 10 yards behind it. So here's this big boy right here. absolute monster of a morel. We're gonna go ahead and pick him, obviously. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. This is the mega mushroom. Look at this absolute toad. Come here, big girl. I got you. Well, I didn't mean to uproot you all the way, but. Look at that. Absolute. Giant. Look at that thing in my hand, and I have really big hands. That's a big mushroom. Heck yeah. So along with trees, there's actually a couple of plants that I think you guys should kind of take a look at when you guys are mushroom hunting, because I've seen uh, morels uh, associated with this specific plant right here. These are called May apples, um, and right now it's, uh, I think it's like April, late April, so they're not, they're not going to have any uh, flowers yet, but they will flower eventually, um, and morels like to grow around them. So this is what they look like. You guys see those big leafy? And you can kind of see this one right here. There's a white dot in the middle. That's where it's going to bloom. Um, but there's no mushrooms or anything here yet. It's a little early for them. They're typically uh, better to find morels around uh, in the late season. So we're going to keep trudging through here and see if we can't find any more. Can you see it? Let me make it easier for you. Hello, little friend. Coming home with me to be eaten. I think I can see another one. I don't know if that's a mushroom or not right there. Yeah, that's a mushroom. I kind of walk gingerly through here. I get to this mushroom. Probably more around your shelter than just this big boy. Oh, I see another one over there. go. I'm going to kind of keep searching around here though. I bet there's probably more laying around here that I haven't seen yet. Like I said just a, fruit, a few brief moments ago, I bet there's going to be more around here. And uh, as you guys can see, I'm in the middle of all this dead stuff over here. There's a whole bunch of, you know, dead logs, dying trees. Um, but I just found those two hopped on the back side. Uh, 
There's one. And there's two. Uh, one thing I do want to say is if you guys are getting into this dead stuff, depending on where you're at, uh, be careful for snakes uh, like copperheads uh, and uh, timber rattlers. I don't have to really worry about that here up in Missouri. Um, not where I'm at anyway, but just be mindful. Just want you guys to be careful and safe and have a good time. So I'm kind of going to sit here for a second and just kind of peek around. I found, I see another one over there, but it looks like it's pretty rotten and has a lot of ants in it. So I'm going to let that one, uh, I'll let Earth have that one. Well, we've made it across the creek. Uh, I have some other stuff I have to go do today, so I can't mushroom hunt all day like I want to, but that's part of it. I have to uh, go take these up to the house and get them all cut up and soaked in salt water, so I'll catch up with you guys here in about two minutes. Well, actually, for you, it's going to be about 30 seconds, so we'll see you then. So we have our plate of mushrooms here. If you guys can kind of see that. All right, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take our handy dandy knife here and split them in half and uh, let them soak in salt water right here. Salt water. <clears throat> this one is a mega. Like, here's it next to my phone for, you know, kind of perspective. But we're going to go ahead and get into it. Get all these off the plate one at a time here. We even have a little baby. We'll start with a little baby. Take our knife out of the sheath without cutting our hand off. Nice and split in half, and this one doesn't have any bugs in it. That's a great way to start. What this is doing while we're soaking it, you know, sometimes in the trough of these mushrooms, uh, they'll have bugs, ants, whatever. So, but this one's all good to go. We're going to go ahead and drop her in into the salt water. She goes, and we're just going to keep going down the line. in this one. I'm going to go ahead and split the rest of these and I will catch up with you guys in one second. All right, now that we have those mushrooms uh, all split up and soaking in that salt water, we're gonna let them sit for a couple days in that water um, and uh, we'll catch up with you guys then. It'll only be like two seconds from you. So that being said, we'll catch up with you when we're ready to cook them. What? It's like four days later and it was only two seconds. All right, anyway, um, time to cook these bad boys, these delicious golden chicken of the earth as we like to call it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get it started. First thing we're gonna do, just to expedite the process, is we're gonna dump our oil into this bad boy right here. All right, now back to it. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. All right, so now it's actually time to cook these bad boys. And uh, what we're going to do is we have panko breadcrumbs. This just makes it a little bit more crispy. doesn't really add any flavor, but uh, gives a nice breading. Um, enhances it a little bit. Um, and then we're going to use classic breading mix from Louisiana Fish Fry. This is unseasoned, so we're just going to add uh, garlic, pepper, and... Uh, salt to it just to give it a little bit of flavor. We don't really want to change the flavor of these mushrooms because they're already so good already. So we're going to go ahead and dump this onto our cookie tray. The cookie tray is just the easiest thing to use. And we're going to take those breadcrumbs. Sprinkle these bad boys in there. And 
there's barely any salt. We already put garlic salt in it, so we're already going to have you know, pretty good you know, seasoning to it. And I'll show you kind of what it looks like here real quick. Looks like just a big mound of just randomness, but we're going to go ahead and stir it up so it'll look all nice and good. Turn it to you guys over to the left. Sweet. Okay. We're going to come in here. Let me grab a spoon. just going to kind of mix it. Stir it all around. All right, so we kind of have everything set up and in the in working order, so that way when we uh, go through and start cooking it, we can kind of just um, go through really fast. That's another thing I do want to say is as you guys are cooking these mushrooms, um, it's, in my opinion, I think you should have the oil as hot as you can um, with whatever oil you have uh, without burning it. That way you get a really good crust and you don't overcook the mushrooms and they don't become mushy, but they still have a little bit of a, I guess, rigidity to them so you can you know, kind of chew into them and get a little good lobster type bite. They are called the lobster of the earth for, you know, for a reason. So this is kind of what we're looking at. Now uh, we'll start from the right, I suppose. And um, we have a uh, plate with some napkins. So as we take them out of our oil, this is hot. It's going right now. Um, they're gonna go right onto our napkins. Um, that napkin's gonna soak all that extra oil so they're not all greasy. Um, from the oil, uh, they're gonna have the breading, the egg wash, and then all of our mushrooms are raw, untreated, and just 100% ready to go. So we'll go ahead and uh, get started here in one second when this oil gets hot. All right, I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. Let's see how it goes. Grab the mushroom. Boop. See, my fingers are all crusty and everything. So, yeah, you know. We're doing what we're doing now. Go ahead and just give it a little dangle dangle. Mm -hmm. Let it drip for a second. Boop. Into the burning. Cover on it. Pat, 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 pat. Come in here. Get this other side. Pat, 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 pat. Into the oil. We're done. Alrighty, our morels are done. And here's what they look like. Absolutely beautiful. Look at all that golden crispiness. Oh. I have yet to try one. I mean, I've tried them before, but not in this batch. So we're going to go ahead and grab this crispy boy right here. Cheers, mate. Woo. Need a little bit more salt, but whoa. Whoa. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've pretty much eaten this whole batch, and um, I'm not really regretting it. I mean, just look at the sound. So juicy. Good. Anyway, thanks for joining. If you guys liked today's video on how to, you know, find, clean, cook, and just absolutely smack these things, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next video.